Welcome everyone, I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on the bell to be notified when I upload more videos. If you love model railroading and love learning new tips and techniques, please check out my friends over at HO Scale Customs. They have a great podcast and they interview lots of people in the industry and share many tips and techniques. Uh, so be sure to check them out. It's HO Scale Customs. Okay, so in today's episode, we are going to be working on a clapboard wall. Enjoy the video. So I'm going to try something new today that I've never done before. I'm going to try using Crackle Medium from Folk Art. Uh, I bought this at Michael's Craft Store, but you could probably also order it online. Um, we're using a normal piece of clapboard siding. Um, this I have not braced. I recommend if you're doing this on a kit that you definitely brace the back of it with some 1 8 inch uh, strip wood to keep it from warping. But for this example I just sprayed this with a uh, primer. Next we're going to add some texture to it with a wire brush. And make sure that you go the same direction as the clapboard. This step is optional. You don't need to add more texture to it if you don't want to. Next, I'm going to add a wash over it. Just using brown paint from folk art dab a little bit on my palette and this is just a uh, Folgers coffee lid I love using this because um, the paint comes off washes right off of it I'm just adding lots of water to this. I may use um, burnt umber just to darken it up a little bit. Again, make sure that you're going the same direction as the clapboard. Now we'll speed things up and uh, use a hair dryer on it. I think that gives it a nice aged look. You can see how it's uh, warping there. A simple trick is to wet the back of it. A 
again, if this was, uh, if I was using this for a kit, I would have braced the back of it, which uh, would have prevented that. But you can see already, look at, it's already um, going back to being straight. So next we're going to apply the crackle medium. Um, I probably spent five minutes with a hair dryer going over both sides of this making sure that this was extremely dry so I'm using a bigger brush and I'm going to go a little heavier towards the bottom it's probably covering three boards at a time and then as we get higher I'm going to do a little more random and try doing some individual boards just to see um, the different effects that I can get with this. I'm even going to use a thinner brush and try to do some individual boards. We'll just do some random spots um, just to see how this product works. Now we'll dry this again. Now that this is completely dry, um, we're going to use vintage white from Folk Art. I'm going to apply it like I normally do with doing individual boards or maybe two or three boards at a time but just taking my time So after I applied the white, uh, I took the hair dryer and uh, dried it really good. And as it was drying, I could start to see the paint cracking. So I think that it definitely worked better um, towards the bottom where I went heavier with it. I think that next time I will, using the crackle medium, I will go solid with it over the entire surface. Um, and then go a little heavier with my white and I think you'll see uh, more cracking in it So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just see what happens and put the crackle medium heavily over the top part of this and Do some more white and see what happens So I'm applying it pretty heavy over the top half. Now we will dry this.
Now I've completely dried the uh, gel medium. And I'm going to use a, a pure white. It's not a vintage white or an antique white. It is just pure white. Just so that we can see if we get some of the uh, texture from underneath it to show up. I'm going to go thick in some spots to see if we can get some more cracking to happen. Now again, we'll dry this. So it's completely dried and really not much more cracking appeared on that layer. I think it actually worked better um, the first time we did it. I think next what we'll do is uh, to give it uh, even more of a chip paint look we are going to use a sponge that is made for um, grout for people that do tiling to wipe the grout off of the tile and this can be bought at Home Depot or Lowe's or really any hardware store uh, but it's meant for uh, cleaning grout I'm going to use a uh, steel gray. And burnt umber. I'm also going to put just a little bit of black in it. a little bit more gray we're just trying to match what our original base color on this was and we're going to dip our sponge in it and then make sure we blot off a bunch of it So you can see we're just trying to um, give it even more of a peeled paint look. Okay, next we'll use some uh, pastel chalks. And we can go along the bottom of the wall just to add some dirt to it. And if you want to put some streaks. And 
Next, to add a little more texture to it, we will lift some of the boards. So just go underneath the board and then lift. You can first, if you'd like, make a cut in one of the boards, then go right next to it. Get your blade under it and then lift the board. I have a very dull blade so it's not working quite as well. Uh, we'll try it with this. Oh uh, yes. Definitely the sharper your blade is, the better it's going to work. So now to make those stand out even a little bit more, we'll take a little bit of uh, a dark brown, not much, just a little, and go underneath the cracks of those openings. You can run them down, streak it down a little bit. So maybe in those cracks, the uh, dirt and dust has um, settled from the last storm and then in the next rain um, that dirt sort of washed down the wall a little bit. And if you want you could go even darker I'm uh, going to use some uh, black. Simply scrub my brush over it. And put it directly on here. And again, I do not recommend uh, sealing this after you're done. Um, a lot of times when you spray a sealer on this, uh, for whatever reason, the pastel chalks seem to disappear. And because it's a structure, you won't be handling it once it's on your layout. So really there's no need to um, put a spray on it. I thought while I still had some paint on my palette that I would do a little bit of dry brushing just over the edges, the raised edges of the clapboard. And you're just lightly dragging your brush over the edge of the clapboard. Because really that's where the paint would start to chip off or wear off. So there's very little paint on the brush and you can see I'm dragging it uh, sideways just so it's going over the edges.
hopefully you can see that. So as you can tell from this uh, video, to achieve a realistic look, the key is going to be layers. So I started with a gray base uh, that was kind of dark. I did a brown wash over that layer. I then did my crackle medium. Then I used a vintage white over it then I did crackle medium again then did a pure white over uh, the top portion of the wall um, then I lifted some boards I went in with two different shades of pastel chalks and then I dry brushed it so um, that is a lot of techniques and a lot of layering over this one panel, over this one wall section um, to achieve this look. So really that is the key is to do um, layering. Um, I think a lot of modelers uh, that first start out think that it can be achieved in one or two steps and it can be um, and you may be happy with that result I think uh, to get a more realistic effect um, you're going to want to do many layers so this is just one technique on how to do an aged wall with uh, chipped or cracking paint uh, and we'll explore other techniques uh, later on. Uh, I just wanted to give this a try with the crackle medium. Uh, and I think it's going to take some practice to figure out uh, how well it works. Uh, and there are other uh, chipping mediums uh, that I'll be buying and I'll be testing those products too. But I think overall, I think this was a pretty good experiment. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This is only one technique of aging clapboard. Uh, there's other techniques that I use and in the future I will be making more videos uh, showing you those techniques. Um, I highly recommend uh, practicing uh, little squares or little rectangles of clapboard siding. That way you can practice different techniques and find out what works best for you and uh, what you're happiest with because uh, at the end of the day you should model the way that you want to model and do it the way that um, looks best for you uh, very inexpensive you can buy clapboard siding from Foss scale models uh, and all of the product that I showed uh, is really pretty inexpensive a lot better to practice first uh, rather than trying a new technique on an expensive kit. So, highly recommend um, experimenting first on, on scrap pieces. So, well, if you enjoyed today's video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And again, subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell to be notified when I upload more videos. Thanks for watching and happy modeling.